dogs. Uh, just like you'd be proud of artwork. You know, just like you'd be proud of a painting or it, I built this, you know, and, and I built my own personal dogs, you know, for me. And I don't know, I just love them. I like them. I like to, uh, I like to see what I can manipulate without going over the edge, without, you know, taking it too far. And as you do that, just little tweaks here and there, you can get to what you want. And this right now is probably, this is probably the first time, you know, since I started. I'm good right here. I don't want to change anything more. I like, I like wow. the size. I like the, you know, I like the temperament. I like this, that they can chill when I chill. I love that. They're just, they're easy to have. They're convenient. I think this is the first time I heard you say that you, you, you made it to this point. Because yeah. every other time I talked to you, you said it's still a work in progress. I know. I always say that because I take it very seriously. Mm -hmm. And it is, you know, a work in progress until making it breeds a big deal. It's, it's so much more than one cross. And I'm not sure that everybody understands that until they have a lot of dogs and fail a lot of times and, and go all around and see these things. Talk to people that are making these breeds. And see where they're, because we all come from different, you know, different places in what our goals are. Um, and my goals were just, confirmation's big to me. Soundness is big, but type, type is the main thing. Okay. These two are sisters. Literally. Yeah, take, just take them, just let them go. Yeah, let them go. Collar on? Either way. Just put them off. I have them. I was about to stack her up. Yeah, she's a teeny one. Yo, she tiny, bro. Look at this, look at this. But he said, he said, if you can't hold your dog like this, it ain't micro, right? Now this is what you call tiny, tiny, tiny. Beautiful dogs. I'm really shocked at the bone that these dogs is carrying. You know, sometimes cameras don't show exactly what they're doing, but Jamie figured out how to keep that bone on them. Don't worry, I'm gonna put you down. Uh, my name is Anissa Malden. I'm from Hugo, Oklahoma, and I've been breeding shorty bulls for about 12 years. I am the register for the Bull Breed Coalition. Uh, the very first shorty bull I ever saw was a little puppy in a little black leather spiked collar with a, a fresh crop and I instantly fell in love. I knew I had to have a shorty bull, at least one. I didn't know where to find them, I didn't know anything about them, but I had to have one. Um, did some research, got online, found out that this lady named Jamie Sweet created shorty bulls, found out what they were, and um, instantly, instead of calling Jamie, I just call up my breeder friend. I'm like, oh my god, have you heard about these things called shorty bulls? And of course, yeah, I know Jamie, and and yeah, yeah, we should get some shorty bulls. I'm like, oh, that'd be great. Um, I've never forgotten that first image I saw of that shorty bull puppy, and it was just a puppy. It was just this tree trunk legged thick girthy boned up bully little thing and i was just instantly in love their personalities i think they have a very good personality um uh, i like their smaller frame um that's what i like about them shorty bull to me is a small compact bulldog with a lot of fire and grit um, and where I really think the Shorty Bull hits a home run is it covers a lot of different, you know, with the drive and the tenacity, the look of the dog. It's really a very unique dog if you really sit down and really think about it. Well, I call it a miniature English Bulldog without all the health issues that an English Bulldog has. I don't know if I'm right. I'm not dog smart, but. 
but I know they don't have the issues that the, the uh, English Bulldogs do. To me, it's just a dope little micro version of a Bulldog. Um, it's unique within itself, and that's one of the reasons that why I fell in love with the Shorty Bull breed is because there's no other breed like it. Um, I've been breeding American Bullies for about 15 years, and I can truly say American Bullies and Shorty Bulls are like night and day. The Shorty Bull, as far as like their personalities, um, how brave and courageous they are as it pertains to just uh, daily living and daily stresses that you are kind of, that a dog uh, kind of has to go through, um, the Shorty Bull is able to kind of conquer it. Um, Jamie would say that they kind of have just the right amount of that bulldog dumbness where, um, you know, they want to please their owner so much and they might get themselves in trouble just because, you know, they're courageous and, and, and they're active and things like that. Do you remember when you learned about type? I remember when I learned about it. I knew all those things, but I was like, type, what's type? Tell me about that. Tell me about when you learned about type. When I learned about type, well, you know, dad was big on that, so I had to learn it. I had to learn it young, and I think it's important to know type. Like, if you can name all the bones in the dog's body, that's great. But if you don't know what type is, it doesn't matter. If you, you know. Yeah. So, it has to look like what it is. That's the purpose of a breed. That's why it's a breed. And there's five components to type. So I made up this little uh, way to remember type. Okay. Every canine can't show man. Every canine can't show man. Mm -hmm. So that stands for expression, mm -hmm. character, coat, silhouette, movement. Those five things make your type. And those five things should define your breed against all the rest of the breeds. Then you have a breed. Okay. But but if you say, oh, you know, it's got bulldog with short legs, or it may very well look like that, but it has to be defined. That's the only way to be a breed. Be a breed is the type is what makes it stand out and stand on its own. And I want to stand out. Like you know, when you see a Doberman, that it's not a skinny Rottweiler. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> or when you see, yeah. Yeah. And so type was very important to me. And when I wrote the standard in that, that was, that's what standard talks about. They breed pretty true, true to type. And herd dog, now I'm going off a of herd dog. You know, a lot of, you're going to see a lot of people jumping in on that bandwagon with shorty bulls and making the roan. And we got to remember, you're going back. 30, 40 years of knowledge that Jamie has on dogs, that when you put your program together, you're, you're, you're losing 40 years of knowledge. So she put that 40 years to, to use. This is her baby. I don't know over the last 10 or 15 years how she did with promoting the dogs. I, you know what I mean? I only know the part of the, her in the development of the dog. Of, what it took to get that dog to look the way it is consistently. My name is Ife Oyudokin. Um, I'm from Lagos, Nigeria, um, raised in Chicago. I'm a mental health specialist um, with Williamson County in Texas. And my experience with the Shorty Bulls is uh, I'm a newcomer. Um, I've known about the breed for quite some time, uh, but I just uh, got my first Shorty Bull about seven, eight months ago, and then picked up my second shorty bull um, several months after that. I mean, my first time seeing them is what really, really, really drew me to the breed. It's like, wow, you can get that amount of body, that amount of bone, the personality, that agility, that drive on that compact of a frame, and still able to be in a house dog, or they can being a you know outside dog you can take them to the park you know the the shorty bull is such an adaptable breed i think is really what sets them apart from a lot of the other breeds uh, that's out there some people may breed a dog and they lose that balance and you have too much of one dog look versus the other dog and what jamie has done is she's taken that and she's made them all look into one dog 
but yet it's so distinct that you can still see what was in there. Her knowledge is vast, and again, I keep begging her for that book, man. I like to say that Shorty Bulls are a combination of, of what they're made of. You know, they've got that French bulldog kind of sweet, quirk, quirky kind of comical attitude. They've got that English bulldog swagger and just attitude, just oozing attitude. They've got that sweet staffy bull disposition where they're just happy about everything and they're just super happy-go-lucky, they're adaptable. Um, I don't know, Shorty Bulls are quite possibly the most amazing dog breed I've ever known. The one, the one thing about Shorty Bulls that I love the most, and you have to be here for a while before maybe it, it comes out, but for such characters, these guys have such personality, and they pay so much attention to you, they read your mood right off jump they do and they like to watch you do everything in the morning especially if you work and have a work schedule <laughs> they want to make sure they see you before you go to work and then when you get home first thing they do but their personalities are very unique and the more you interact with them the more you get what they don't understand is the 20 years previous to these dogs even being made what what, what she had to go through weeding dogs out wanting a certain quality dog as far as function and temperament. You know, she didn't just slap two dogs together when she did this. This was a very time consuming process. It took a lot of, you know, a lot of good dogs, even the English bull, I'll never forget the English bulldog she used. She had an English that she wanted to use in her program. And I said, where the hell did you find this shredded, ripped up dog that's jumping in and out of cars? Oh, they're out there. You just got to look. You got to get the right dogs. I got to use the right dogs. I don't want a train wreck. I don't want a mess. I don't want, I want good hips. I want fire. I want drive. And I said, she, you know, I, well, she had a vision. You know, she had a vision. And uh, she was, she was held to get it. You know, right from the start. She did she was done. I ended up getting one from her and Sure and shit. It was a firehouse, man. I mean, it was it went back down from nothing. It was never uh, any genetic defects on the dog, and it just goes to show you, you know, when you have the the knowledge and you have the patience and the worth ethic that she does. Um, this is what you get. He'll be here for he'll be here all day if you let him. If you don't stop him, he'll be here all day. Uh, I love the shorty bull because of their adaptability, their compactness. They're small, but they're not so small that they're not a durable dog. That they can't be a man's dog. The number one question I get asked when I walk one of my dogs or I'm talking about my dogs is what is a shorty bull? They love it, they like it, they want it, but they don't know what it is, man. And I get tired, I get tired of the age old answer of a shorty bull is this, this, and this. A shorty bull is a shorty bull, baby. And when you see one, you know one. But it is, in my opinion, the best bulldog ever created, especially for our generation. It can do anything you ask of it. That's what a shorty bull is. It's anything and everything to the person who owns it. It's all you need and it's all you got. So you, you, rock, you rock with it, man. The shorty bull is a little bulldog, big head, short body, thick, and it's an attention grabber no matter where you are, man. It's the prettiest girl in the club and the fastest kid on the football field. It's everything and everything. That's it, man. It's a shorty. But my slogan is, this ain't no damn Frenchie. The shorty bull is not a French bulldog. It's its own breed. And when you see a shorty bull and you see a Frenchie next to each other, you can tell the difference. Cognitively, they're different type of dogs. They're bred differently. They act differently. Um, so it's just my way of bringing awareness to people who are familiar with the shorty bulls or people that are not familiar with the shorty bulls that the shorty bull is not a French bulldog. My all-time favorite shorty bull, I'd have to say, was Rampage. I fell in love with Rampage the very first time I saw him. Um, I believe it was in the Boulevard Forum. It was a, a picture that Jamie posted, and he was about a year and a half old. And I was like, oh my God, 
that's a shorty bowl and um, it was actually the first shorty bowl that I incorporated into my own blood. I'm extremely happy with where I am, where I'm going, um, you know, and a lot of that is thanks to Jamie Sweet. I've used several of her dogs over the years to help build my program. You, you need at least three, three breeds to cross together to make some, otherwise it's just a crossbreed. Okay. You know, which is still cool, but... When you make a new breed, it needs to be three, you know, because we want it to be different. And it can be more, but that's a big, it's already a big juggle with three. It really, really is a juggle. Just imagine a juggler in your head and what you're trying to keep. Which ball you're trying to kick out, you don't want any more. Why well, you're trying to get this one over here. But you're still trying to keep these three going over here. Yeah. When you think about it like that, I think, I think that's a great way to think of how we do as breeders. Because it's, it's a game. I mean, when people say it's a game, that's the game to me. Can I juggle all these things? And that's why it's a challenge to me. I've done this a long time with a lot of dogs. That counts. That counts. I said, Jamie, are you out of your, are you really, really seriously going to do this? She said, Joe, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to do it with the right dogs. I'm not going to take any English Bulldog or I'm not gonna take any Stassi bull or whatever breed I'm gonna put into these dogs, the actual specimen has to be perfect. And right there I knew she was talking from her father. You know, her father was, she would tell me it was the same way with dogs. If the dog wasn't perfect, they didn't use the dog. I was using these three breeds and I knew that they would be upset. That's normal. But I thought I was gonna get past because I gave it a new name. And I wanted to be very respectful, you know. So you might as well embrace it and go see it and learn about it instead of just be over there and be mad. Great breeds are interesting. It kind of feels funny for me to say that still, you know. Still because I wanted it to be so solid. And it didn't come out the way I wanted it to, to at all. It didn't? I mean, the way it was introduced mm. the first time. Okay. I wanted to have like 20 grown dogs for this big first impression. I mean, just imagine that when you're, first impressions to me and dogs are huge. Whatever the breed, I would never bring a pup out in a lanky stage. I would never, I mean, when you bring a dog out is just huge to me. Huge, huge, huge. So bringing a breed out is even, even bigger. Who or what played an instrumental role in the success of the show? Oh, that's a lot of people. You know, well, give myself some credit in here first. Hey. Okay. You know, because I didn't give up. Yeah. And this was hard to do. I mean, can you imagine just fighting the whole world about your breed of dog? I mean, you go to bed at night sometimes thinking, why am I even doing this? You know? It took a long time. Uh, I'd say uh, my dad, you know, he inspired me and I learned about perseverance through him. And you have to do that and you have to decide that you like it. You like the idea of it better than losing a puppy, better than losing a litter, better than your bitch not taking it. I was in the fifth grade. I came home from school because I got home first. And then, I, you know, Dad would always pick me up. Wouldn't learn to pick me up. So I walked home and Dad was, he looked, he just looked crazy. And he was just telling me to call Mom. He's like out of it. So I called Mom and that was the last time I saw him for months because he was in the hospital for, for several months. And when he came home from the hospital, 
he wanted to try to learn to walk again, but what happened was it was coming up his body, so when it got to his heart, you know, he would die and they didn't know how long that would be. During that time, it was it was a tough time because dad didn't work and, you know, this, I mean, it was super stressed, 30, 32 years old, and I mean, and you heard mom talking about everything he did in your life just stops one day but not all the way just all the good stuff i don't know when when he died it was his funeral was crazy though the people that came and had these little stories to tell you know and but he was really something and he was funny and strong and tough 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 he was real serious like on saturdays Especially if it was raining and it was a Saturday and we couldn't ride. We, he would make me go to the barn and he'd get tell me to go get out a horse, you know. Go get Blaze out and then tell me. He'd ask me different body parts and stuff where they were. Okay, well, I was little. I didn't know all that stuff. <laughs> so, it was really, I would, I remember, like, man, do I just guess or do I say I don't know? Because I never wanted to disappoint him, but yeah. I really didn't know. Yeah. Dad and I, I, I wanted to have this extremely bully dog that did everything. That's what I had in my head. And he said, you can't do that. And I said, yes, I can. And that's when I learned about form follows function. Do you remember when you learned about form follows function? I remember thinking about that and thinking and thinking. And I wanted things. And it just it wasn't going to happen. But you could not tell me that. You know, and I'd get it so close. And then I'd get... I'd get something that was like the exception to the rule. And I'd be like, well, there it is. Right. And he'd be like, it's the exception to the rule. Do that three times, and then I'll believe you. <laughs> well, that never that never happened. Right. I love the look of a bulldog. I don't know why I'm drawn to that, but I'm drawn to that every time. And if I looked at a chihuahua, I would like a bullier one. If I looked at a greyhound, I would like a bullier one. And, you know, so... I'm just drawn to that. My lifestyle is we can do a lot of stuff we, for, for a little bit and have fun and that's it. That's all I need. I mean, I'm not going to run 20 miles. And, but I used to think like, you know, I was going to. And so I w always wanted to put the definition of a game dog on the short, bunchy muzzle of an English Bulldog. And I thought that would be, that would just be my perfect dog. But that's really hard to do. Right. Both very old breeds. They're both been around a long, 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 long time. Uh, pit bulls were, I think that's like the most raw, primitive version of a dog. That's what they, you know, I think if we just let everything be, it would go back to that. That's what a dog wants to be. Right. And the, the English Bulldog is totally man-made compressed and compressed and compressed and so when I put those together that's two really strong things fighting against each other and looking back on it I think I should have I should have known but I thought the bully would just take over the bully traits would take over but that's that's not what happens and so when I bred to the to the pit bulls that blew my mind because you hardly even tell I did anything maybe just a little bit shorter Maybe just a little bigger bone, but... But it wasn't, the initial results wasn't what you expected. No. No, and they still acted. You know, I don't I don't need something that does backflips all day long and uh, makes that noise. And I was neat when I was younger, but I don't, I don't want that anymore. And so, yeah, I didn't get anything like real bully at all. Like, not even a little bit. And then, as I did that... I learned to recognize what, what happens when you put a cross in there, like the tails. They're gonna be straight, not even a kink. You know, so that was that was real interesting to me. The paws. An English bulldog will make them just a little bit rounder. You have to really look at that, but you can kind of see it's a little bit rounder paw. And they put different proportions on. So a bulldog should square everything up. Like when I say proportions, I mean like a, a head big for its body. Um, you know, heavy shoulders. 
So proportions, that was another thing I learned, is breeding for proportions and talking about size too. Like if it was little and it was small and it's, I don't know if I like it that small, but if you looked at its proportions and it still had a big head for that little body, I would breed for proportion, not, you know, not size. And, and I know you mentioned before that you uh, build your dog from the from the rear forward, rear forward and the ground up, because the rear is such an important part of a dog. I don't know if you've ever had one, but I've had one before. And sometimes when we're starting out, you know, the head's all that we look at. So we forget to look at the rest, and you're almost blind to it at first. I mean, like you didn't even notice that until somebody pointed it out to you, and then you see those feet. And You'll never miss that again. That'll be a deal breaker on your next dog for life. But the rear is what powers the dog. On English Bulldogs, you know the center of gravity that's in the in the front, up high, down low. Have you ever seen one of those dogs that when it goes to eat, the rear comes up? Yeah. Center of gravity's way up there. But a lot of times we think, so what? What's that matter? And that's when we talk about soundness. And soundness, I think, is soundness. It means the wear and tear of the body on itself over time. So the argument forever is, you know, what do you have to have time for soundness? You really need both. You really need both. And, I mean, you can, you can think about how you wear and tear on yourself over time. If you're an athlete, or, you know, if you just have a sedentary lifestyle, or even how your body's aligned, it all affects that. So the goal, I mean, the goal for everybody should be, I want the dog that I want, and I want it to last as long as it can. Okay, that's right here, that little brick building past the Bobcat storage. Griffin. I graduated from vet school in 1989. I really got into the bulldog part of my practice. I'm a mixed animal practitioner. I do livestock and small animal. I uh, got into the bulldog portion of my practice probably oh, 20 years ago. Uh, I got an interest in English bulldogs. Um, I've raised English Bulldogs. I had a partner. We've raised them for 16 years. Um, and it attracted a lot of clients to my practice because I had an interest in the English Bulldogs. Um, I do a lot of Bulldog work. Uh, we do a lot of reproduction work on Bulldogs. Uh, I did over 200 C-sections last year. We've gotten where we do a lot of soft palate surgeries. Uh, um, bulldogs have a tendency to have tail issues. We do a lot of uh, tail amputations. Um, dealing with uterine infection issues are a big problem when you do a lot of C-sections. We're good at that. Um, about anything there is to do with bulldogs, we do it. Uh, I met Jamie and got in and her interest into the shorty bulls probably uh, 16, 20 years ago. Um, uh, we went through a lot of trials over the years. Um, I think she's very conscientious. I think her dogs mean a lot to her. I think the quality of her dogs mean a lot to her. Uh, I think it's been a passion of hers for years to develop this breed. Um, I think she's done a great job with it. There, a combination of many different bulldogs put into one. Uh, they're a shorter version of most of the other bulldogs. 
smaller, more compact, um, unique. All of them are sweet dogs. I've never met one that didn't have a good personality. I, I do believe that they're a more durable breed by far than the English. Um, I think they have good lifespans. I, I haven't had to deal with major medical issues on Jamie's uh, shorty bulls or I have several clients now that, that have shorty bulls and we haven't had major health issues uh, with them. I think they're a very durable breed. Hi, I'm Jackie Nagy and this is Jaws. Yeah. And now he's so I renamed him Jaws because yeah. huh. when he was, when the day you picked him up, yeah. he was just snapping the rope. Huh. He still chases balls and we go, he goes everywhere. We used to run two miles a day. We used to live on a private lake and so we would run around it and once around from our driveway back to our driveway was one mile. We did it twice every day. And he did that up until we moved last year. Uh, well, he's 13, and I think, if, you know, when he turned 10, maybe that's when he turned so gray-faced. But his whole face was black, except the brindle on top, and now, of course, he's white. But who is from it? From here all the way up past his eyes, magic grayed the same way. Yeah? Yeah. Ah. He's, a, he's the best dog. I, he has absolutely been the best thing in our life. When Ariana got sick, and she was on in treatment and it was home all the time. He slept with her. He didn't leave her side not one time. He knew something was going on, but yeah. he was right there. When Ariana was nine, I noticed a bruise about this big, solid black on her back. And I took her to the doctor and her platelet count at that time was 7,000. Normal platelet counts are 300 to 400,000. Uh, she was dying. She had severe idiopathic aplastic anemia. Her bone marrow quit working. She's been in remission for seven years now, so she's doing a lot better, but she was in the house with a mask on, had to wear it everywhere, did all that stuff, and he was there. Tuffy. If he could have went in the hospital with her, he would have. He used to sleep with us until then, and then he sleep with her, and he never, ever, when she stays the night in somebody's house or something, oh, he just paces. He's so but, lost. Yeah. <laughs> He's not much of a barker, not much of a crier, really. Although, he will let you know if somebody strange is in the yard. <laughs> Nothing. He's never had anything wrong. Um, my experience with Shorty Bulls interacting with kids is... They're awesome. They're just absolutely awesome. I've never had an experience where I've put a shorty bull into a family or had my own shorty bulls uh, in my own family situation to where uh, I would ever be concerned. Environment for any creature, especially shorty bulls, is extremely important because they're so moldable and they, they do adapt to their surroundings. Um, and I think that that is something that is consistent from generation to generation. Okay, so this is my high school, and our mascot's the Bulldogs. And uh, this is this is a statue that that they had done. I was really excited to see this, and then I saw his teeth, and that kind of killed my vibe a little bit, but. It's still really cool. Kids love it. When I uh, taught preschool, that was one of the things I did on a regular basis, would be bring the shorty bulls to work. And the kids loved it. We'd give them a bath. It was a great opportunity for the little ones that didn't ever get to have a dog. Shorty bulls were specifically designed by me for the, the patience of a saint with children. That's a very, very important to me. And it was easy with a bulldog because they naturally have a high pain tolerance. So. I took a lot of dogs through the CGC program and, and things like that, and just my own testing. I wanted nerves of steel and a high pain tolerance, and I, and I built that. I put that in there, and they're very, very, very good with kids. Go, say. Where'd go? Oh,
you got a Blue River Shorty Bull, you got the real deal. You cannot say the dog is nice when it's, when you know, it's when it's not, you can't be. You have to be very selective about your words. Nice dog, nice dog, nice dog doesn't do anything for a brief. Your program reflects what you are because it's yours. I'm not going that way. I'm going that way. I'm not going backward. I'm going forward. Yeah. I'm just going forward. Um, that's what you do when you build a brief.